Arsenal Football Club have historically been one of England's elite, and their performances on the pitch this season certainly seem to suggest that they're on their way back to that pinnacle. But how do they compare off the pitch? What kind of financial shape are they in? In a previous video, we've highlighted the key things to look at as we read football club financial statements. Specifically, they are 1. Revenue growth and mix 2. Wages, the cap, distribution and inflation 3. Debt and finance costs 4. Transfer spending and return on investment We'll examine each of these aspects for Arsenal using their latest available financials, specifically for the year ended May the 31st, 2022. And let's begin with revenue growth and mix. Arsenal's revenue growth was a healthy 13% in 2022 over 2021, driven primarily by 75% growth in matchday income with the re-entry of fans into stadiums. Over the last five years, though, the trajectory has been negative, with revenues falling 13% from £423 million in 2017 to £369 million in 2022. In the same period, all of Arsenal's top six rivals have powered ahead despite Covid. Manchester City's revenue grew 35%, Liverpool's grew 34%, and bitter rivals Tottenham Hotspur's revenue grew by 45% to £443 million. So this means that Spurs now make 20% more revenue than Arsenal. They were making about 40% less in 2017. And this muted revenue growth is a key concern and focus area for the club. Should they win the Premier League though, the fillip that could enable through better sponsorship deals and enhanced broadcasting income through participation in the Champions League would elevate Arsenal's income generation potentially significantly. The club's revenue mix is diversified and overall healthy. There's been an increased shift towards commercial as a source of income, from 28% of revenue in 2017 to 38% in 2022. This is a trend seen across most Premier League clubs. However, one could argue there's massive untapped potential here. Arsenal's commercial revenue was 54% higher than Tottenham's in 2017. It is now 30% lower. Their ability to build and harness a commercial engine will be a key determinant of the club's ability to compete financially with rivals in the next decade and also reduce reliance on matchday income, which is currently around 24% of revenue for Arsenal, above their top six peers, who are between 15 and 18%. Next up is wages. Arsenal's wage bill was cut by 11% in the last year and at the time stood at £212 million. The club described it as a process of restructuring the men's first team squad to improve efficiency. This basically meant getting rid of older or underperforming players, sometimes even for free, who in the words of Josh Kroenke were being paid Champions League wages without qualifying for Europe. Arsenal's wage inflation is the healthiest among the top six clubs, with a growth of just 7% in the last five years. By contrast, Tottenham's wage bill grew 65%. Chelsea's 55 and Manchester United's 45 in the same period. Arsenal's management of wages overall has been commendable, and it also serves to accentuate the job that Mikel Arteta has done to build this team into a title-competing unit with a significantly lower wage bill. A noteworthy mention is that wage management goes beyond players to the management as well. The wage paid to the highest-earning director, Ivan Gazidis, in 2018 was a casual £2.7 million, while in 2022, Arsenal's highest-earning director was paid £635,000, which is less than a fourth of Gazidis's. To put this in perspective, Daniel Levy earned £2.7 million last year and Ed Woodward earned £2.9 million. Overall, though, while Arsenal's 58% wages-to-turnover ratio appears healthy, the truly sustainable way to manage wages is to accelerate revenue growth, thereby enabling the club to afford wage increases. Now, The third important aspect that we'll look at is debt and finance costs. Arsenal's gross financial debt stands at £234 million, which is well below other top six peers. Manchester United's, for instance, is £636 million and Tottenham's is £853 million. Specifically of interest is also the debt refinancing in the wake of the pandemic. This significantly reduced interest costs. Arsenal's interest payments averaged between £10 and £12 million annually from 2013 to 2020 and dropped to £5 million in 2022. It also unlocked a £35 million cash reserve, which per the previous debt agreement had to be held in reserve only for debt and interest payments. 
This gave Arsenal a one-time cash injection, which was much needed during COVID. And finally, player transfers. Arsenal's transfer spending has increased exponentially in the last five years, splashing out roughly £750 million, almost double the £386 million in the preceding five years. In 2021-22, Arsenal spent £188 million to recruit the likes of Ben White, Martin Erdegaard, Aaron Ramsdale, Takahiro Tomoyasu and Albert Sambilakonga. This was higher than both Manchester clubs. That trajectory is likely to continue in the current year with the arrivals of Gabriel Jesus, Alexander Zinchenko and Fabio Vieira costing well over £100 million. Now, this spending combined with muted revenue growth has led to an explosion in credit-based transfers or transfer debt, which is the money that Arsenal owe other clubs for those player transfers. This amount stood at £183 million, double the £77 million that it was in 2019. It's also the highest number in the Premier League, making it imperative that Arsenal accelerate revenue growth. The second implication is a sharp increase in player amortisation or the annual charge to expense transfer fees over the duration of a player's contract. Arsenal's player amortisation stood at £125 million in 2022, more than double where it was in 2016. This places Arsenal fourth in the Premier League on this dimension and has impacted the bottom line heavily in recent years. So what kind of conclusion can we draw from all of this? Are Arsenal financially healthy? Well, Arsenal are broadly all right financially right now, but negative revenue growth in the last five years is a major flag. It's imperative for the club to accelerate revenue growth in the next couple of years to prevent the current situation from snowballing. Revenue growth would help manage down the wage bill as high-profile players come up for contract renewals and manage down both player amortisation and the growing transfer debt. And of course, a Premier League title wouldn't hurt either. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic is home to some of the world's best sports journalists, including journalists dedicated to each Premier League team, so every fan gets the coverage they deserve, not just the big clubs. And you can try it for free now for 30 days. See the link in the description.